I get questions all the time about how long a power station will run different types of things. And one of them, probably the most common, is how long will this power station run my CPAP? Well, I've had a few other questions and I'm going to address them here in this video. But let's start with the CPAP. I happen to have about an eight-year-old ResMed AirSense 10, and I was able to test that using a DC watt meter as well as a regular watt meter like this one here that I've shown in other videos. Those run about 12 bucks on Amazon, super cheap, and they're a great way to find out how long a power station will run something. But if we're talking about taking a power station out to go camping and you happen to need a CPAP, how long is it gonna run that CPAP? Well, that's the first thing I tested, folks. And what I found was kind of interesting. First of all, the most important thing to understand is that most CPAPs come with an AC adapter. So that you have to plug that into the wall and those actually take a little more power than if you could run that CPAP off of DC. And this is what I found. Running a CPAP off of a power station on the 120 volt side uses the power station's inverter in order to get you that 120 volts and those inverters can use anywhere from 20 to 50 watts in order to run. That means that over an eight hour period, your power station may be depleted by as much as 160 to even 400 watt hours just running that inverter. That's not even including the CPAP itself. So that's number one. You really need to know how much power the inverter on your power station uses over a given period of time. And that's easy to test. If you already have a power station, all you have to do is turn it on, make sure it's 100%, turn your inverter on and then leave it for a specific period of time. For example, if you sleep about eight hours, leave it on for eight hours. After eight hours, see how much it's depleted that power station in that eight hour period. If you use 40% of a 1000 watt hour power station, that's 400 watt hours. Just divide that by eight hours and that tells you that it uses about 50 watts per hour. That's important to know because if you put a watt meter on your power station and then plug that CPAP into the watt meter, the watt meter is only going to tell you what it sees, meaning that how much power it takes to run that CPAP. So if it takes 300 watt hours to run that CPAP over an eight hour period, you may find that your power station's actually drained more than that. In fact, if it uses, say, 300 watt hours just to run the inverter, and you use 300 watt hours to run your CPAP, that's 600 total watt hours in that period of time. That's an awful lot, but there are ways to get around that. The first is to get a 12 volt adapter for your CPAP. The 12 volt adapter means that you don't have to run the inverter on the power station, so you're not going to lose all that power just running the inverter. Now, when I tested this, I found that if I set up my CPAP the regular way that I use it, I use about 273 watt hours in a seven to seven and a half hour period. Now that is running it off of the 12 volt side with the cellular on because CPAPs do use cellular often to communicate back to a central server somewhere and with the humidifier and the climate settings all on. It uses a lot more power when doing that. That tells me that if I ran my CPAP for two nights, that Jackery 550 will in fact run it for that period of time, though it's going to be pretty much depleted at that point. However, if you have a solar panel that you can use to charge that power station back up during the day, well, that's gonna save you a little bit of heartache and worry, but at least then you know that to fully run that CPAP, a 500 to 600 watt hour unit is going to be able to do that for a couple nights. Obviously, something a little bigger, like my Dabson 600L that has 768 watt hours, is going to do a better job of that, but it, you don't necessarily have to have one that big, especially, again, if you have a solar panel to charge it back up during the day. But if you don't have any sun, having something that has a little more power than you expect to use is a good idea. Now, one of the things that I found was that if I took that CPAP and I turned off the cellular, in other words, I put it on airplane mode, it used a little bit less power overnight, and that was a good thing. It's going to save you. But if you turn off the climate control and the humidifier, it only uses about 150 watt hours overnight. So there are ways to make those CPAPs last longer out in the field if you want to go out camping. But I would say in order to run a CPAP for just a weekend, you need at least 500 watt hours. And actually, I would say 600 to 800 is a much better size to have. Now the next question I had was how long will a power station, in particular in this question it was the Dabson 600L, how long would it run my smoker? 
Now the viewer had a pellet smoker, very similar to the one I have, which is a Traeger Pro 780. So I set that up on my Dabson 600L and I let it run to see how it did. Now, to be honest, before I did that, I used a watt meter. And the first thing I noticed with the watt meter and I thought was actually kind of interesting is that that smoker only used a maximum of about 100 watts. So I knew right away, if the most it uses is 100 watts, it probably is not using that much power all the time. So I was confident that I could run it off of that Dabson 600L. And I went ahead and set it up and I smoked a brisket for seven and a half hours. And I only used about 29% of the 768 watt hours I had to run that smoker. And that included running it off of the inverter. So you'd have no problem running, I think, most pellet smokers off of a small power station if that's something that you wanted to do. It really didn't use that much power. No problem there. Now, another question I had was, can I run my 750 watt water distiller on an all powers S2000, which has a 1500 watt hour battery, if I connect a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery to the solar port on that power station. Now what I found was that my water distiller that I have uses 737 watts, just shy of 740 watts when running. And it used just over 2,900 watt hours in the four hours and 15 minutes that it took to distill one gallon of water. Now that means that you could not run a full cycle on that distiller using the All Powers S2000 and one additional battery because that's just not enough power. That gives you about 2,780 watt hours and you really need more than 2,900. And let's not forget the inverter is going to also use power. So I would say that that is not gonna work. There's a couple other things to consider as well, and that is that the solar input port on a lot of these power stations won't allow that much power to come in off of a 12.8 volt battery. You might only get 130 watts or so coming in off that solar port, and if all you're getting is 130 watts and you're using 740, that means that you're gonna be drawing over 600 watts off the internal battery on that power station, and in four hours, that's 2,400 watt hours. So you would definitely need a bigger power station to do that. But could you do it with something like a 2,000 watt hour power station and had a battery connected to it? Well, you could, but a 12.8 volt battery, again, is gonna be limited to just about 130 watts, and so, you're, you're running into an issue there because even at 130 watts, you're using 600 watts every hour to run that distiller. And that means that in four hours, you're gonna need 2,400 watts. So you would have to have a power station that can draw a lot more power off the battery and you would need a battery that's at least 24 volts. Now in my testing with an AFRI P210, I was able to get over 500 watts off of a 24 volt LiPo4 battery connected to the solar input. It was able to draw 500 watts doing that, and that means that I'm only going to draw 240 watts off the power station during that time. So in four hours, I'm going to use about 1,000 watt hours off the power station, but I'm also going to use over 2,000 watt hours off that battery in that four hours. But that's okay, because guess what? That's going to get that gallon of water distilled. The battery is still going to have a little bit of power left in it. The power station is going to be maybe 50% and you can then get them charged back up either using a charger or solar power or something else. So it would do that. But in order to run a distiller, you do need a little bit bigger power station. Now, another question I've been asked is how long will my power station run my refrigerator? Well, folks, that's kind of a loaded question because there are lots of different kinds of refrigerators. Some of them don't have freezers. Those tend to be more efficient. Some of them are really big, some of them are really small. And that's where something like the watt meter comes in because all you've got to do then is plug your refrigerator into the, the front of the watt meter and plug the watt meter into the wall, reset it and have it tell you how much it takes to run that refrigerator. But don't forget, the inverter's also going to use power. So you're going to have to add that to the total that the watt meter gives you. Now, obviously with the 12 volt stuff, you're going to have to have a 12 volt watt meter to do those tests. I do happen to have one thanks to Commvolt who sent it to me about a year ago. I've used it quite a bit, but if you don't wanna run that kind of test and you're trying to run 12 volt items, the easiest thing to do is to plug that 12 volt item into that power station and let it run for a given period of time, say just four hours. 
you can then look at that and say if it uses say 250 watt hours in four hours and you want to be able to run 24 then all you got to do is multiply that times six to get 24 hours and then you can figure out whether or not your power station is going to run it for that period of time. It's always tough to try to figure out a lot of different items, but if you have something you'd like me to test, go ahead and drop it in the comments down below. I'd be happy to run some tests and let you know what I think. I often will put those answers in the comments if you ask them. So don't be shy, drop them in the comments and let me know. And I'll go ahead and drop another video over here for you to check out. Thanks for watching and thanks to all my members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. Lots more coming. Stay tuned, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.